All right, guys. So uh, as boring as changing the oil is, I get asked this all the time. Um, how do you change the oil in a dry sump? So today I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through it, make it super simple, super easy, step by step. Cut out the boring stuff. You'll get the idea. All right. So the first thing you got to do is take off this 3 8 hectare drive. Okay. First thing we want to do is just simply, if you can see that, simply remove the belt. Okay, so just take that whole thing, slide it off. Okay, because we're going to need to access this pump here in a minute. Okay. Next thing we want to do is remove the inlet to the oil filter, at least the stage one of the oil filter. Let's see if I can get this dude to come loose. This, of course, is a dash 10. Right, inlet, outlet, the whole oil system is a dash 10. Well, except for the return line, it's a 16. Anyway, get this dude off. I do have an oil pan underneath here. I know you guys probably can't see it's off camera, but I do have an oil pan right here. It's a good time to look at the oil, right? Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay. So, you can see this thing. Actually, I'll back it up. I made this, which of course goes into my drill. You want to use your drill on the slow speed, of course, just high torque. Not an impact, right? A drill. Regular drill, not an impact. Then, what we're going to want to do is maneuver this guy up here into the holes on the pulley itself. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I want you guys to be able to see. See this line right here? That's that drain we just took off from the uh, oil filter. Okay, watch what happens when I start to spin it. Ooh, gotta be careful. Two and a half gallons worth. Oh my All right, I'll do that again. This time you guys can see the holes a little better. All right, I'm just gonna put this dude in those holes. Just coming out of the other side. Yep, basically, you're going to do this for. About 10 minutes or so. And then you'll start to notice you'll hit the bottom of the tank. All right. All right. That's pretty much it. Probably three gallons total all, uh, all the way out. So now I want to take the filter out of the Peterson since it's a stainless. It's a dash 12 AN, right? Oh man, that sucker's on there. Let's see. No, this way maybe. There she goes. Oh. All right. That dude's out. And then the spring come out too. And then you got to get a pair of pliers to grab that thing. But I know it's kind of tough for you guys to see, but up inside there is where the actual oil filter is. You can grab it with a pair of pliers because it's on an O-ring, just to pull it down gently, All right? And that is the stainless steel reusable filter. All right, so now we go clean this thing. So now we move over to the other filter, which of course has a bit of safety wire on it. Get that dude out of there. Gotta replace that whole thing, of course. Not like these will ever come off. In fact, they're really hard to get off. Now, uh, I find these 
bottom pieces, nuts on the bottom of these to be good on the smaller ones. This is just a little piece of foam that's stuck in there. These are a little bit uh, harder to get off than your your typical oil filter just because the rubber surface is just a darn big. I'm gonna fight with this for a minute. But basically what I like to use, I like to use these big old jaws, right? And I have to actually be right where the camera is to be able to get back in here and basically grab onto this dude like this and, you know, spin it off, turn it off of there. But uh, let's see if I can move it a bit. So I was able to move the camera, get back here. You can see the bite marks from that thing. Yo, I might wanna move some of the lighting here. I'm gonna bring that drain pan back over. You guys can't see that, but I'm doing it. I will take this dude off. This is basically a uh, dual filtration system. What I've done here is it goes in through a uh, 60 micron stainless steel filter and then comes over into the big K&N for all of the much smaller particulate, if, if there is any. I just looked at that filter and it actually looked pretty good. Let's so do this without making a giant mess. These are the giant NASCAR ones with the, if you can, I don't know if you can see that. No, we're off camera. So now we put the new one on there. Ooh. These are the k and HP 5001. In case anyone wants to know what size this is. She's a big one. She's a big one. Uh, big filter. Uh, all right, I think we're good. Now we got that filter on. I put this guy back in. Oh, of course, gold side goes up. Feel it around a bit. There it goes. Seats in there. And then the spring. We'll actually like bite onto the end a bit. Put this guy back on. Um, now this thing, this cap, um, I cleaned it, of course, because you do get a little bit of galling because it's a serviceable part. And I like to put a, just a touch of oil, not only on the O-ring, but also the threads, just to, uh, just to make it nice and smooth when it goes back in here. All right. These are pretty good. It's just so slippery from the oil on my hands. Okay, almost there. And I want to be sure. You do that. There we go. It's it's just a snug fit, right? You don't want to crank the heck out of these things. It does have an O-ring in it. The next part is kind of fun. Getting the fitting back on, which actually just goes like this. Oh, it's so slippery. I gotta grab it with a paper towel or something. Okay. And just snug that dude up. Make sure you got the clearance down here. The way I have it set up is just a nudge of clearance back here. Just enough. So now we get to use VR1. I, I like this stuff, right? But we just have to basically fill the tank up. Alright, took that off. All right, the second gallon of VR1 here. Actually, this is five quarts, not a gallon. All right, okay, so right there, uh, I'll show you guys where it's sitting here. What I like to do is, 
you guys can see down in there, I hope. Maybe. Something like that. But uh, it's, I don't know, four inches from the top. But I mean, it has a gallon and a half in it. So now what I'll do is go back down and, uh, and we'll go spin the pump. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention before I go down there and spin it with the pump, I'm actually going to plug the tank heater in because this guy actually has a 110 volt tank heater down on the back side of it. It's a probe type goes into the bottom of it. That way you can get the oil temp up and you're not trying to, you know, spin by hand 20 to be 50 oil. Um, seems like it's been good oil so far. I mean, I've had really good luck with it, but keep in mind, you know, this thing's never snow brushed off and then started on a 20 degree day. I mean, it's always at least 70 or 80 degrees usually when we take it out. A couple 50 degree days, but you know, not exactly your cold weather oil. Um, performs, seems to be really good at high RPM, at uh, high temp, so I'm gonna keep using it. So it's been about 20, 25 minutes since I plugged in that oil tank. It's obviously warm. I went ahead and finished up wiring the oil filter, putting the safety wire on it. But now that the pump or the tank is nice and warm, it actually is really nice to do this. So again, back in here, trying to stay out of the way of the camera as much as I can. Oh yeah, it just feels a lot softer. So we're doing two things here. One, we're filling up that gargantuan oil filter. And we're also pushing oil into the bearings and of course out through the scavenge and the bottom of the oil pump, back to the scavenge pump and ultimately back to the tank. And the heater's still on, I'm still running it. Uh, yeah, nice warm oil, right? Anyway, all right, now let's go check the tank. How much it go down? Oh yeah, see, that was quite a bit compared to where it was before. So I'm gonna throw some more oil in it and we'll pump it again. So back down here again. All well, the tank has been topped off. Should be all good now. You know, you can go really fast, I just don't like to. That little piece I made likes to wobble. But it does the trick. Probably building 12, 14 psi of oil pressure by doing this. It's actually pretty cool. But I just want to make sure that that oil filter is filled with oil. I want to make sure that this whole system is primed. There's no air in the lines. And that's basically it. Okay. Yeah, you see that? Spring back on that. That's from oil pressure, right? <laughs> Fun stuff. Now that all that's done, now we can go ahead and throw the belt back on. Close slides by there. Over here. Make sure your washer's back on the adapter. Take the pulley. And this has to be, oh, so perfect. I mean it just goes on there, precisely the way it should. Oh, hopefully I didn't have my head in front of that. And this guy, since it's in aluminum, I just want to just snug it up. All right? It's long. There you go. And that's it. That's all it takes. Put this thing back together. Now, just top off the oil, and we're good. Let's see if this looks good. Yeah, I think that's about right. We're, uh, I don't know, maybe four inches from the top, maybe four and a half. I want to start it. When I run it, I'll actually check the oil again, but it has 10 quarts in it right now. So it has more than enough oil to get to the bottom of the tank. That tank's actually really big. If you guys can see that, it's, 
It's a big tank. It's one of the Peterson tanks. It's really good. Works great. So there you go, guys. That's it. Uh, I can fire this thing up. Put the lid back on this guy. And I think we're pretty much done. That's about all there is to changing the oil on a dry sump system. At least the way I do it. It's nice having a tank heater. Be able to spin it through nice warm oil and whatnot. But uh, there you go, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this. Um, thanks for watching.